Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Trade and reads, what steps, if any, is he taking to manage his interests in the 40,000 shares he owns through a trust in New Zealand Farming Systems Uruguay Limited to dispel any perception of a conflict of interest as Minister of Trade? The Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr Speaker, I'm going to do two things. Uh, first of all, I'm going to carry through on the additional disclosure I made to the Cabinet Office about the shares I put my retirement funds into, um, additional to the requirements of the Register of Pecuniary Interests, and I'm going to take all necessary steps to avoid any conflict of interest in the unlikely event that one would occur. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this beat-up and get on with the job that I actually am appointed to do. The Honourable Pete Hodgson. Order. 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 The Honourable Pete Hodson. Why did he quit? Order. Order. There's been enough interjection. The Honourable Pete Hodson. Why did he quit the India Trade Group so quickly last year when his co-owner, Dr Richard Worth, started to get into a pickle but has not quit this much more valuable asset that some might say leaves Uruguayans feeling like order, tenants order, in their own country. Order, I apologise, Honourable Member, but I couldn't hear the question. I, I and I'd invite the member to start again with this question, and, and I'd ask members to keep the level of interjection down so at least the speaker can hear the question being asked. Otherwise, I cannot determine whether or not it's in order. Uh, the Honourable Pete Hodson. Why did he quit the India Trade Group so quickly last year when his co-owner, Dr Richard Worth, started to get into a pickle? but has not quit this much more valuable asset that some might say leaves Uruguayans feeling like tenants in their own country. The Honourable Tim Grosser. Point of order, the Honourable Cherry Brown. Where is the ministerial responsibility uh, for anything in that question? Well, if I heard the question correctly, the member asked uh, the minister about certain actions he had taken sometime last year. If I remember the question started, why did he quit uh, something? Now, that is asking uh, the minister something to do with his, uh, I presume, with his interests, and, uh, and therefore it, it, uh, I believe the minister does have responsibility for that. The Honourable Tim Grosser. Mr. Point Speaker. of order, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. I actually think, Mr Speaker, with the greatest respect, you just need to think a bit more uh, carefully about your ruling there, because order. what you're saying is, is if a minister gets asked anything whatsoever about property or their personal details, that they have a responsibility as minister in this parliament to answer it. I don't see how possibly a minister could be answering a question in this house as minister about why they might or might not sell particular shares. It seems to me incongruous. Order. I've did. Well, I'll hear the honourable leader of the house. Further, Mr. Speaker, Brown. Mr. Grosser answered the first question. Uh, very, very appropriately, I think, and made it clear what the situation is. To then be put through uh, a bit of a test about, well, why did you do this last year uh, when you're doing this this year, I think steps far too far. He's been very open with the uh, Register of Pecuniary Interest. That's why the opposition are able to ask a question. Uh, but I think, sir, that particular question, if you were to look at it again, steps well outside what might be reasonable for ministers to answer in this House. I appreciate the, uh, the points raised by members, and this is a, a, an issue that needs to be handled carefully by the Speaker. I fully accept that. And I accept the point made by the Honourable Rodney Hyde that, that minister, individual ministers are not responsible for the register of pecuniary interests. Uh, that, that's a, a thing that members of Parliament are required to comply with. However, ministers are responsible for management of conflict of interest. And it was my... Uh, interpretation of the question whether or not, and I, I stand I wouldn't uh, mind uh, seeing if the clerk agrees with my view on this but it's my view that uh, uh, the, uh, the you know, where, where there's a potential conflict of interest with, with the Minister's portfolio interests, then there is legitimate ground for questioning and uh, but I certainly confirm that the, the Minister is not responsible as Minister for the, the issues surrounding the Declaration of Pecuniary Interests. And uh, uh, I, I, I think on this, rather than me rule the question out, I think the Minister would be capable of handling it, but he's only required to handle it insofar as it involves conflicts of interest relating to his portfolio interests. And on that basis, I invite the Honourable Tim Gross to respond to it, to answer it. 
Well, there's a very straightforward answer to this, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, and that is, I resigned as a director of the company because I was told it was not appropriate to be director of the company and a minister. That brings up. Oh, no, the Honourable Pete Hodson has a further supplementary. The Honourable Pete Hodson. a question, but that'll do. Now that he's told the media that he didn't tell anyone he owned shares in Uruguayan land because no one had asked him, but, quote, if anyone had asked me, I would have told them, close quote, will he now list what else his trust, Jolly Mont, owns because I am asking him? The Honourable Jerry Brownlee, point of order. Mr Speaker, it's not appropriate to ask members of this House, whether they are ministers or otherwise, if they are going to do something that is not required by standing orders. And if this question stands, then we're in very deep trouble. Mr Speaker, we should be able to therefore ask Mr Hodgson, has he got KiwiSaver? Where's his KiwiSaver funds going? What shares do his KiwiSaver fund hold? And what interest does he have uh, or, or have to declare to the House when it comes to voting on matters that might affect those, those shares. It's been widely accepted for a long time that where members of Parliament have an interest that is no greater than any other member of the public or is no less available to any other member of the public, then that is not a conflict. Mr Speaker, that question opens this thing up very, very widely. And I'd suggest that there is no one in the House who could, uh, who could cast a vote on any matter if that type of question is going to call their integrity into, into public scrutiny. Speaking of the point of order, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Um, Mr Speaker, I do think this is an important issue because it's impossible for a minister, as a minister, to have any responsibility for where their superannuation funds might be invested or where maybe a trust that they are involved in invests money uh, ministers are required to declare uh, their register of interests. Uh, that's not what's in play here. What the, Mr Hodgson is attempting to do is to ask a minister uh, about their personal investments, which as a minister they surely aren't responsible for. They're responsible for that uh, as a member of parliament, as an individual, but not as a minister. I'll hear the last, uh, the last contribution from uh, Trevor. Mr. Speaker, I think, I think all of that uh, would be right if the original question wasn't predicated uh, on a conflict between the role of the Minister of Trade uh, and his personal arrangements. And I think that's, that's, where, uh, that's where this one uh, goes, this, where this issue goes to. It, the, the question uh, couldn't have. Uh, couldn't have got there uh, if there wasn't at least a conflict, uh, or a, a perception of a conflict of interest. Uh, and the question, I think, is then properly asked as to whether the Minister has other conflicts with his role as Minister of Trade. He has, I think, in this House accepted that there is one already. Uh, he's got rid of part of it, retained some of it. But so the point that I'm the point that I'm making is that the point that I'm making is that uh, it is we need to know that ministers don't have that. And so for the for Rodney Hyde uh, to indicate that it is not possible for a minister to have a conflict of interest. Of course it is no, possible. I think, no, I've heard, I've, no, I've indicated I don't need to hear any more on this uh, matter. Uh, what the Honourable Trevor Mallard just said was correct if the Minister had been asked about conflicts of interest, but he wasn't. He was asked would he list on his, in his pecuniary interests uh, any further uh, interests or shareholdings a certain trust may have. And that is not within standing orders. Uh, and so I, I would rule that the, and even, even though the, the member might say, but the minister said uh, that I'm happy to uh, make a, a declaration um, of pecuniary interests, in making that statement, the minister cannot actually be questioned on that statement because it's got nothing to do with his portfolio area. And that's the members asking questions need to be very clear on that. They cannot question ministers, as the Honourable Rodney Hyde pointed out, on their declaration of pecuniary interests.